With most of Oceania already hooked on Rugby League, the next logical step for the NRL is expansion. But is a $200 million gamble for a foothold in the US market really worth it? To find out, we'll have to dive deep into the history, challenges, roadblocks, and the potential payoffs about this move for the future of the NRL. Was the wager that was Rugby League in Las Vegas an incredible prediction on a unique opportunity, or a colossal waste of pretty much everything just to end up forgotten again like it always has? Let's dive right in. Rugby League has existed in America since the 50s, with the first unofficial test match being played in 1954. But why was it such a big flop compared to other sports there? Rugby League in America has always been an overlooked sport. Unlike in Australia, where Rugby League is already very established, the United States has a much smaller pool of players to draw from due to the scale of the sport over there. This lack of existing players has made it very difficult to establish a strong domestic competition and grow the sport's popularity. While the troubled history of the sport in the US clearly isn't from lack of trying, it only gives the NRL a reason not to sink almost 30% of their annual revenue into it. So why would they ever consider coming back for another shot? The NRL sunk over 200 million into hosting these two NRL matches. And it's no mystery where this money went. The entire Raiders field had to be replaced with the NRL's logo and sponsors, rolling in the new field and dealing with the size difference. The logistics for moving the teams and everybody else who's needed for the games to run, and the wild marketing they ran for this event, likely took a pretty big chunk out of their budget. Out of anywhere in the US to go for the second shot at the US market, Las Vegas might have seemed like the perfect spot for this new venture. However, the gamble on a new market hinged on the crucial factor of market saturation. Unlike the relatively clean slate the NFL encountered decades ago, Las Vegas already hosts established powerhouses like the NFL's Raiders. The NRL would have to work much harder to carve out a niche for itself. The battle isn't just for attention as well, it's also for the fans. Rugby League, while enjoying the support of about 30% of the population of Australia and most of Oceania, is pretty unknown in America. Building a fan base from scratch would have demanded a long and expensive push. But this doesn't quite answer our question. The games were considered a relative success, with over 60,000 viewers on the first game in the US. But was it really that big of a success? The $2 billion Allegiant Stadium that hosted the NRL has a capacity of 65,000. But you can see the amount of seats left empty, especially on the second game. The viewership from Australia was easily 10 times the US viewership. But this isn't a terrible start, as nobody really knows what Rugby League is in the US. However, these numbers leave out some pretty important factors, such as how many of these viewers were actually Americans, and how many were just undercover Aussies. While these games are a success, for this type of market this is just the beginning, and with the NRL having plans to repeat these Vegas matches in the future, where would it go from here? Expansion can be a great opportunity for a competition to let in new teams, but a Vegas team would be a logistical nightmare. The vast geographical distance between Australia and the Nevada desert is definitely one of the biggest issues in setting one up. The frequent cross-continental travel for games, training seasons, and even fan attendance would have driven the travel costs through the roof. The logistical challenges alone could have swallowed a significant portion of the team's budget, risking its long-term financial health. These huge roadblocks make it pretty clear that the NRL wasn't going for a team in the US, as there would have been much better spots to establish a team for the NRL, but just for viewership and a fan base over there. With enough time and a solid marketing strategy, the NRL could start converting random people into huge league fans. This comeback isn't impossible, as proven by some other major sporting leagues. The success of Major League Soccer, which has been steadily growing fan bases and television audiences, demonstrates a receptiveness to alternative sport. And even though soccer is many times more popular in the world than rugby league is, it shows some potential if the NRL plays their cards right. Ultimately, this next step makes sense. The need for expansion and sporting competitions will always exist. And if the NRL can use their resources to get their name out there and establish fans that are even half as dedicated as the ones here, it'll be a success. 
And I'm also not saying that the US doesn't have some dedicated fans, I'm just saying that it doesn't get enough attention from the general population. Only when this $200 million gamble is several years in will we know if it'll ever be worth it. The new tactics they have brought to the table give Rugby League another chance at mainstream popularity in the US, but the established dominance of other sporting leagues and teams, the need to cultivate a new fanbase, and the logistical hurdles pose a challenge in the NRL's path. However, the potential rewards in the form of a foothold in this massive American sporting market, and a shot at global expansion, gives the NRL enough reason to try. Rugby League in Las Vegas might have been a gamble, but it was a gamble with the potential to rewrite the sporting landscape for the NRL and change global views of Rugby League. If you'd like to find out what the five most revolutionary rule changes in the NRL are, click here. I'm sure you've never thought about how revolutionary some of these rule changes were. If you've liked the video, then consider subscribing to see more of these types of videos. And I'll see you in the next one.